Boris Becker is one of the most controversial figures in tennis, which sometimes makes people forget how good he was. We will uncover the player's nature, style, mentality and performance. His physical presence. Boris was one of the tallest back in the day. Oh, and he had a stylish clean cut. A 6 foot 3, 180 pound beast with a powerful, menacing serve. He had a service game so hard that opponents literally had to get out of the way. Okay, that's laying it on thick, but Becker nearly clocked 140 miles per hour on his serves, which is quite impressive since he did it with a wooden, outdated racket which didn't have the technological sophistication of modern day rackets. The leg drives, the way he put his entire body behind each serve, the strength and brute force behind the racket. It's no surprise that his serve, athleticism and physicality made him dominate other players in his generation while also earning him the nickname Boom Boom Boris. In an interview with Tennis TV, Becker's arch rival Andre Agassi described his serves as something the game has never seen before. Imagine how good you have to be to earn such a compliment from a bitter enemy. Despite his intimidating physical presence, he was fast for a player of his size. Becker combined his explosive game with some impressive techniques. Technique. Becker had a flawed technique, one that would earn him six grand slams in 10 finals and 49 singles trophies. He often followed up on his fast-paced serves with a net rushing approach, which appeals to classicists. He didn't need enormous ground strokes most of the time. Rather, he preferred to display his exceptional athleticism with tweeners and spectacular jump volleys, many of which he did for the show. He dived and lunged somewhat recklessly and didn't consider the impact on his body. Maybe that's part of why he needed a new hip. Hey Sitsipas, Herkacz, are you listening? Becker's iconic diving volleys were his trademark, but he could also switch to hitting from the baseline depending on his perception of the opponent. The former world number one brought variety to his game. He had an impeccable one-hand backhand as part of his attacking arsenal. The way he attacked serves with a frightening forehand, side spins down the line, and an unpredictable backhand made him one of the best returners in the game. He made shots that top players nowadays would probably have a hard time executing. As you would expect, his technique wasn't without some swagger. Attitude How did an inexperienced teenager manage to stand out and reach the pinnacle of the game in an era with arguably the purest talents in history? Becker had a certain aura about him and he divided opinions on and off the courts. His oozing self-confidence meant that he came across as arrogant to some people. Apart from his habit of sticking out his tongue while serving, he often displayed a spectrum of rather fiery emotions, from smashing rackets to swearing and emotional outbursts. It was hard for him to escape the fines that came with his emotions being all over the place. Such an attitude could have been due to his highly competitive nature, which would later lead to an early retirement when he felt he was no longer at the top of his game. Mentality It would be a shame to not talk about Becker's mentality. According to him, Everyone doubted him at the beginning of his career. This included his coaches, friends, and family. Still, he always played to win with complete faith in himself and little room for doubt. It all started with a bold decision to take a two-year leave of absence from the school principal in order to participate in Wimbledon in 1985. After winning the title and becoming the then youngest ever Grand Slam champion, the same principal asked him for an interview shortly after. That same year, Becker won the ATP Most Improved Player Award. As you would expect, Becker eventually dropped out of school at grade 10 to continue his professional career in tennis, and in the coming years, he would establish himself as one of the greatest to ever play the sport. In 1987, even after a shock loss in the second round of Wimbledon to Peter Dewan, a relatively unknown player who was ranked 70, he simply responded to criticism saying, I lost a match, my opponent was better, nobody died, after all, we're all human, we're men, we're not always perfect. He then showed his resilience in the same year in his 6 hour, 22 minute match against McEnroe where he won the Davis Cup. The young German edged the home favourite McEnroe on American soil to give Germany the victory. Becker showed he had the mental fortitude to survive one of the longest matches in tennis history. He often shouted to encourage himself during games and often made fist pumps with winning shots. Perhaps such winning mentality was born out of his strong passion for the game. Always play until the end. Otherwise, you don't know how good you can be if you give up before. Such were his words of advice for the younger generation. Becker attributes his mental strength to his parents, whom he says were tough and hardworking. Did we mention that he also had a witty sense of humour? Although this became more evident post-retirement. How far did Becker's good genetics, skill and attitude get him at the end of the day? Performances. Although stats are half-truth more often than not, we still got to look at them. Becker turned pro in 1984 at the ripe old age of 16. At 17, he blasted his way to winning the Wimbledon Championship as an unseeded player and defending it the following year. He owned centre court for the next few years and set a number of records. 
Becker played some incredible tennis, even by today's standards, and when at the top of his game, he was possibly the most feared player in his era. He played his best games on Wimbledon's fast lawn, where he had a 71-12 record and on carpet courts. He won three Wimbledon championships from seven finals, two Australian Opens and one US Open. He also won ATP Player of the Year in 1989 and an Olympic gold medal in doubles in 1992. Becker had little success on clay and never won a major title on clay surfaces, although he came close in the 1995 Monte Carlo Open. Although he held the number one ranking for only 12 weeks in 1991, he remained in the top 10 for 11 years out of his 16-year career. By 1999, Becker was done as a top flight player. He played to win tournaments and didn't see the need to stick around in the game when he felt he no longer had a shot at winning. Becker's career produced 49 singles titles across 14 countries. His titles included three year-end championships and he won over $25 million of tour money throughout his career. However, Becker struggled with motivation after his first few Grand Slams, something he has shared in a number of interviews. His early success and fame came with a mid-career slump and many personal struggles, which eventually got the better of him. How did Becker fare in his rivalries against other greats like Ivan Lendl, Ed Berg, Andre Agassi and Pete Sampras? Rivalries Some of Becker's notable rivalries remain some of tennis greatest ever. Stefan Edberg Becker's rivalry with Edberg produced many brilliant moments and although he dominated the rivalry with the 25-10 head-to-head, Edberg outlasted him in three out of four Grand Slam finals. The Becker-Edberg rivalry would become a major source of inspiration for players like Roger Federer, who acknowledged the impact on his career in his post-match conference after the Wimbledon final of 2009. Ivan Lendl Although Lendl led their head-to-head -head with a narrow 11-10 lead, he didn't beat Becker in the majors, losing all three Grand Slam finals that they played in the Wimbledon 86, US Open 89 and Australian Open 91. Becker holds a 5-1 record to Lendl at Grand Slams. Andre Agassi Becker initially held a commanding 3-0 lead against AA, but the Americans slowly got the better of him with baseline play and powerful ground strokes. At the end of their careers, Becker trailed Agassi 4-10, even though the latter failed ATP drug tests, which could have had some impact on their rivalry. Pete Sampras Becker only defeated Pete Sampras in seven out of their 19 meetings, and he admitted in several interviews that on his best day, he couldn't beat Pete saying that it was time to pass the baton to him. Still, even Pete had great respect for him, saying that Becker is the best indoor player I've ever played. That statement came after Becker defeated Pete in a five-set final in the 1996 Stuttgart Masters. Boris was a true gentleman. He was graceful in victory and in defeat and always respected his opponents. Becker was inducted into the International Tennis Hall of Fame in 2003. Tennis Magazine ranks him the 11th best male player of the 1965 to 2005 period, which makes you wonder how many more titles he could have won if he managed to stay consistent throughout his career. Becker also coached Novak Djokovic for three years, including 2015, which was arguably Novak's greatest season. His partnership with Djokovic produced six Grand Slams and 25 tournament wins. He dabbled into several investments, punditry and administrative work in tennis and other industries. Becker might be struggling with his finances and personal relationships, but his love for the sport and what he brought to the game would always be etched in our memories. Although underrated by some, the living legend remains one of the greatest the sport has ever seen. But even at his best, he could hardly get past Pistol Pete, a younger champ who would go on to rule the 90s, rack up 14 Grand Slams and become the greatest player of his era. More to come on Pete Sampras in this next video.